Hey guys, what's up? The All Blacks have named their team to play France on the weekend. It's going to be an absolute blockbuster. The All Blacks have not won in Paris in eight years. But if they can get the job done this weekend, it will be a huge win for Razor's All Blacks. Let's take a look at the team, analyze some of the positional changes. Let's get to it. Well, let's start with the front row. Once again, Ethan de Groot is persona non grata, although in his press conference, Scott Robertson said that Ethan de Groot is exceptional. He mentioned that he's doing everything he possibly can off the field. So he's out of the naughty boy chair. He's certainly back in contention, but ultimately Razor has to reward performance. And why would you muck around with a winning formula? Look at how well to Mighty Williams has gone. Yes, a couple of awkward moments against the English scrum, which you'll learn from a lot, but in general, frickin' fantastic around the field and defensively. And then you look at the impact that Ofatuanga Fasi has brought off the bench. Why would you scuttle that? Why would you put away all that test experience that Offa has. He is a scrum penalty machine when he comes on. So I'm actually loving the balance of this front row and the backups here. And look, this is a huge win for Pasilio Tosi. He has vaulted his way into constant contention in the All Blacks match day 23. You feel like he's going to be a fixture going forward. Ethan DeGroote really has his work cut out for him next year in Super Rugby, although I suspect Razor will finish the year on a positive note for him. Probably play him against Italy as a reward for holding the tackle bags the last few weeks and having an attitudinal adjustment for the better. But otherwise, Cody Taylor comes back into the starting team, and that seems to continue Razor's policy of if you're the incumbent, we're not going to throw you away based on an injury. You know, Cody Taylor had that head knock against England. He was off in the first couple of minutes. He was the starter. He has been probably the most consistent all-black forward all year. So Razor wants to reward that. And look, Asafa Wamua has been Superman the last couple of weeks. Probably a good thing to have him on the bench. Uh, it's not going to be a rest. And as we learned, you know, against England, he, he could be called into the fray at any given moment, but probably better to have Asafo go back to that bench role that he's comfortable with, let the lessons of those two monumental games where he played almost 80 minutes the last couple of weeks, let that sink in. I think that's a good thing, and we're also going to get that much-needed impact off the bench that was missing earlier this year. It was so funny hearing Razor talk about the bench. He admitted earlier in the year there wasn't really discussion about the bench. They just had the players they had. These are our guys. We have to pick them. There isn't the depth. What he said in his press conference is that the depth is coming now. You have two or three guys who really can play in each position. So there actually is a bit of discussion and debate amongst the coaches. That's exactly what you need. You need a squad that has that depth chart. Moving on to the locks, Scott Barrett and Tupovai are going to start. Tupovai was a little bit off color against England. I'm not sure when he got the knee knock that brought him off in the 41st minute, but it was an anomaly of a game. He seemed closer to his 2024 form against Ireland. Let's hope he has a big game this weekend. He will really be one of the big movers of the All Blacks this year if he can finish this tour on some winning notes. But Patrick Tupelota, who's playing his 50th game, man, it took a while to rack up those 50 tests, but you get the feeling he's going to be a fixture of the All Blacks going forward. He's on the bench, and again, we go back to that word impact. That's what was lacking earlier in the year. If you play Patrick Tupelodu from the beginning, you don't get that mongrel coming off the bench. You don't get that ball carrying. You don't get that pick and go. You don't get that bloody-mindedness that Paddy Toops brings. So very happy for him to get his 50th cap off the bench. But let's move on to the loose forwards. I think Christmas has come early for a lot of you. Many of you, and I read all the comments, you wanted to see Adi Savea back to seven. He is in there this week. And Wallace Satiti is at eight, which means Sam Apenny Finau starts. This is a huge game for him. His form against England in the domestic Steinlager series this year was lukewarm, but Razor seems to think that he's learning, that he's on an upward curve. He looked very good against Japan. Let's not forget that. That was just a few weeks ago. He has looked good coming off the bench. This is his chance to show, hey, I am learning on the job. I may not be the finished product yet, but I'm getting there. Biggest opportunity yet for Sam Penny Finau in the cauldron of the Stade de France Stadium. Very curious to see how that goes. And Razor's not worried about putting Adi back at seven. As he mentioned in his presser, Adi was playing there in Japan earlier this year. And 
has often finished games at seven for the All Blacks. There often is a little bit of a reshuffle of the loose forwards towards the end of the game when the impact players have come on. Artie is a professional. He should be able to slot right in there. Well, some of you wanted to see Peter Larkai start at seven, and we even got a clue this week when Razor name dropped Peter Larkai that he might be starting at open side flanker. I think this is a safer approach. Peter Larkai has only had one appearance for the All Blacks off the bench against Japan. Hell of a task to throw him in there to start against a pack as good as the French. So I think this is more sensible. Peter Larkai has all the potential, all the upside in the world, but we haven't seen it at All Black level. If you were going to start him, then you would have been playing Wallace Satidi at six. You would have kept Artie at eight. Uh, but here's the thing about Sam and Penny Fee now. He has not set the world on fire, but at least he's shown he can hang. He's there or thereabouts. He can play his role. Not in a dominant way yet, don't get me wrong. He has underwhelmed this year, but he can hang at test level. We haven't even seen if Peter like I can hang at test level. I believe in time he's going to excel, but let's bed him in slowly. Off the bench this week, makes perfect sense to me. Start him against Italy next week. But let's cross that bridge when we get to it. Another juicy pair, nine and 10, Cam Roygaard. Yes, I called for this in my video, analyzing that great win over the Irish. I said that Roygaard simply has to start. We need more of that huge kicking game. We need more of that width on the pass. We need more of his running game. We just need more Roygaard. He's finally ready. He had those NPC games. He had a start against Japan. He's tapered beautifully with two appearances off the bench. He's kept TJ Perinara behind the break in case of emergency glass. Roygaard's ready to go against Dupont, the best halfback in the world, a mouth-watering proposition. Interestingly, he'll be throwing the ball to Bowden Barrett, who starts at 10. Now, this is a little bit controversial, but it goes back to what I said earlier about Cody Taylor. You don't get rid of the incumbent just because they got a head knock. Barrett started at 10 against England. That signals that Razor is liking the combination of Barrett at 10, McKenzie off the bench. In fact, Scott Robertson called McKenzie the best bench player on earth. Hard to argue with that. When you look at what he did against England, icing his kicks, really steering the back line well, guiding the All Blacks home. Damien McKenzie is the man for the job. And again, I'm happy for that amazing performance, that coming of age performance from McKenzie last week against Ireland. I'm happy for that to just sink in. He can focus on his bench role that we know he can nail. And let's see how much juice Bowden really has at 10 at international level. He's going up against one of the world's best teams at home. This will be a good gauge of where Barrett really is in terms of his historical form. We know the high watermark was those back-to-back -back World Rugby Player of the Year awards. Where is he in relation to that? We'll see. But I like that combination. And I think, you know, we're in for a big kicking game. And I think the kicking might actually be the biggest factor that got Cam Roygaard ahead of Cortez Ratama, we heard to Marty Allison a couple of weeks ago talking about the size of Roygaard's kicking game. We heard Scott Robertson call it a snowflake kicking game, meaning the ball goes up in the air and hangs there for so long that it gets a little bit of snow on it. The French are going to try and kick us to death. We need that scope and accuracy of Roygaard's kicking game. The back line is otherwise exactly as you'd expect, but let's look at 14. Sever Reese comes in, a straight swap for Mark Talea. For me, that is a downgrade at international level, but Mark Talea has a hand injury. So rather than take Will Jordan out of the fullback slot where he's really making it his own, I can understand. Let's go for a straight swap with Sever Reese. And also, the coaches are looking at the style of game that's going to be played. Most likely, France are going to give the ball some air. This is a team that loves to attack. This is a team that loves to play open rugby. Sever Reese could thrive in that environment. I'm kind of on record saying he is not uh, a first choice wing for me, but this actually could be his kind of game. If the ball goes his way, if he gets into a little bit of space, that's in Sever Reese's DNA. That's the kind of game where he shines. So could be some opportunities there for him. And then if you look at the backline replacements, Cortez Ratama, a lot of you wanted him to start because you just felt, well, Roy Gard's going to give that huge impact off the bench. Yes, but I feel we need 
Roy Gard for 60 minutes offering that impact against the best halfback in the world, DuPont. You know, their jewel is what all the eyes are going to be on this weekend. And I do think that Ratama does offer impact. He has a hell of a running game. Let's not forget that. Roy Gard is a flashier player, but Ratama can really take on a tiring defense when he runs around the fringes. So I think he's got a lot to offer with his running game. I know that he had a bit of a horror show last week. If you want to hear my hot take on it, yes, it was not Ratama's best game, but he was not helped at the breakdown. And full credit to the Irish, at times they threw everything into the ruck, mostly legal. Uh, you know, I did see a few bodies in, in green shirts kind of lying all over the place, but Radama didn't get much protection in that first half. And by the time Roygaard came on against Ireland, the All Blacks had the breakdown much more sussed. So we saw how Radama does with back football. That might be the kind of ball that Roygaard gets this weekend. So I'm happy to see how Radama goes this weekend. Wasn't his best game, but I think he will come back to form. As for my prediction for the game, I suppose I'm sort of going to hedge my bets here. A year ago, I made a video predicting how the full calendar year would go for the All Blacks. And I predicted that they would get up over Ireland because I just felt we had actually psychologically cracked the Irish in that Rugby World Cup. That proved to be true. Unfortunately, I, I predicted that France would beat the All Blacks. However, I'm going to revise my prediction. I think the All Blacks can do it. I think they've grown a lot. I think they're a different team to when I made that prediction. If France is going to win, it's going to be through their astute kicking, their huge kicking game, their accurate kicking game. They're going to pin the All Blacks down in the 22. They're going to get the points, and God knows they know how to score a try. If the All Blacks are going to win, they need to kick as accurately as they did against Ireland last week, put the French in two minds, stay patient, and eventually find those holes and exploit any opportunities that come their way. There are not going to necessarily be many, but they showed they were clinical against Ireland. If they're in that kind of form, I predict the All Blacks to get up over the French. What do you guys think? Sound off in the comments. I will be back on the weekend to break down France All Blacks, and I'll also do an analysis of England Springboks. Great weekend of rugby ahead. Wallabies are playing. Argentina's playing. Everybody's playing. Lots to look forward to, guys. I'll catch you for another one real soon. Take it easy. Bye for now.